Welcome to the Money and Wealth Show. Brought to you this week by AmericanManganeseInc.com. Here's your host, Alex Sakumas. The dreaded HST has cost one premier his job and may end up costing the current premier her job. But there is another former premier of the province of British Columbia, the 28th premier, who is the lead proponent against the HST, and he's with us today. Bill Vanderzam, welcome. Thank you, Alex. It's a pleasure being here. Congratulations on you being the new host. Thank you very much. It's nice to see you again. Thank you. Tell us, you, uh, you started this in 2009 uh, under the uh, Recall and Initiative Act and amassed almost, what was it, 706,000 signatures that represented almost, I think, 45% of all the people who voted in the 2009 election. That's, a, that's a, a startling figure. And when you consider how it had to be done, we weren't allowed or couldn't have polling booths or polling stations. We weren't allowed to pay people. We weren't allowed to advertise without it being screened and scrutinized, and all of that was fine. Uh, we certainly had to account for every dollar spent, and it wasn't easy, but people were standing on street corners in the rain, sleet, snow, wind, collecting signatures, and of course, only when they had the time available. So anyone wanted to sign the petition had to search out someone taking the signatures. It was a difficult task, but we did it. Had we had polling booths, I think we would have had more people than double or triple that. It was a real <laughs> exercise in democracy. A real exercise, a wonderful exercise in democracy, the first time in this country, the first time in the British Commonwealth. That's something. Um, what does the HST really, really mean to the BC economy? You amassed all these signatures and, and they've, they've been cause now for this, this referendum that, that's, uh, that's forthcoming uh, very, very soon. What, is, what does the, the HST actually mean to the BC economy? Well, the BC economy is a little different from other provinces. We're all a little different one from another, but we're largely a resource province. Although we have small communities and we have within Greater Vancouver and Victoria, of course, as well, many small businesses. The small businesses, which are really the ones that create most of the employment in our province, will, I believe, suffer from the fact that people have less money to spend. As a matter of fact, I maintain that businesses don't really create jobs. Consumer, consumers create jobs. If the consumers are not purchasing, if the consumers don't have the money to purchase, the economy suffers. So, uh, yes, I think small businesses will get hurt. I think particularly in the long haul, they'll suffer. It's not just restaurants and tourist oriented businesses. I think it'll go across the board eventually. And the big businesses will benefit, no doubt. And that's why we see all these glitzy ads on television. They're spending mega millions because they're gonna take in billions forever. Let's talk about those, those ads. You raise a very, very good point there. Why are the pro HST ads so apparently Misleading. I'll give you a quick example and then I'll, I'll, I'll let you elaborate. The Premier, Christy Clark, is wearing a, a 10% button. Uh, many members of Cabinet are wearing that same button. They've got these stickmen ads where they continue to talk about the, the HST at 10%. But that doesn't happen for another three years and there are a whole series of things that have to happen between now and then in order for it to become 10%, namely, they've got to win the next election and they're neck and neck with the NDP and the Premier's personal uh, numbers seem to be dropping. Why are these ads so misleading? What, why, it's not, couldn't be just the political expediency of it. Why are, why, are they, why are they trying to pull the wool over the public's eyes? I guess that's the way they think they can win it. I think they must believe that somehow the public of, in BC is dumb, is stupid, and can't figure this out for themselves. Actually, it's worse than what you say it to be because they, they continue to say as well, it's the law, 10%, it's the law. It's not the law. There was a motion in the legislature, no law was passed. 
There was a motion in cabinet in Ottawa. No law was passed. A cabinet or a, a, a committee can't pass a law. It has to properly be presented to the legislature and parliament. So it's not the law. But they're saying it's the law in order to make the point that, hey, we're going to have 10 percent. 10 percent three years from now, I think the populace has difficulty believing the government for what it is they promise to do next week or next month, let alone three years from now. They may not, perhaps will not be the government, and many things can change, including, heaven forbid, a disaster which would require them to keep the money. So uh, it's, it's a lie, unfortunately, and we've seen so much of that. It's very disturbing because I think it, uh, it sends a message to the people and to young people particularly that nothing much matters in politics. You can promise to say whatever you want. It doesn't have to be truthful. I think the people and the truth will win in the end. Very quickly before we go to a break, why is the uh, actual question so confusing? You've got to vote yes to get rid of it uh, and no to keep it. Do you think that was done intentionally? Vaughn Palmer, my friend Vaughn Palmer from the Vancouver Sun, blames you. He says that it was the way that you phrased it. Well, Vaughn Palmer blames me for everything. That goes back a long way, so I'm not too disturbed about that. But no, really, uh, we had to present legislation when we asked for the petition. It had to be accompanied with a bill, not legislation, but a bill right. that could eventually go to the legislature. And uh, the bill calls for the HST to be extinguished. Now, obviously, the question could have been posed, as people would expect it to be, that you say no in order to get rid of it and yes to keep it. That's not how it was phrased. That was not done by us. The question was written by Mr. Uh, uh, Craig James. Uh, James. Uh, the uh, chief electoral officer wrote the question. It had to be approved by cabinet and was. So they could have changed it, but they, they didn't. Well, they could have changed it. I think they, they phrased it the way they did in order to confuse it. That too may come and backfire on them. Let's take a little break and come back and talk about the, uh, the referendum itself. We'll be right back. You're watching The Money and Wealth Show. American Manganese Inc. has a manganese deposit in Arizona. Indicated 6.7 billion pounds. Inferred 8.9 billion pounds. Potentially the lowest cost producer of electrolytic manganese. American Manganese Inc. has a projected cash cost of 44 cents a pound. The metal trades near $2 a pound. Do the math. Trading symbol AMY. Visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 604-531-9639. Money and Wealth Show is archived online at talkdigitalnetwork.com. Here's your host, Alex Sakumas. We're talking HST with Bill Vanderzam. Welcome back. Thank you. Will the referendum on the HST, do you think, be a litmus test on their popularity? Uh, going into uh, an, an election. Uh, there's rumors that, that uh, Christy Clark, the current premier, may decide to call an election uh, in late August for uh, late September, 28 days, as, as you well know, uh, 28 days would be the writ. Um, do you think that, that this will be, a, a, this, this referendum prior to an election will be a litmus test? Do you think that, that this is why that she might be calling an election so soon after the, the HST referendum, no matter whether it passes or doesn't pass? Well, my personal opinion is that if she calls an election anytime soon, she's done. Uh, first of all, the whole question of honesty in government will be the big issue because people don't believe government, people don't believe what it is they see on TV today and what they've been hearing or what they read on their signs. And whether it's Smart Tax Alliance or the government, they're associated one with another. So I think she'd have a big problem with that. So it will be a litmus test. And it'll be about honesty in government, government, truth in government, 
uh, promises during an election, what are they worth, etc. All of that will be, I'm sure, the debate. But if she calls it after they lose the referendum, she'll have a problem. If she waits, or if, she, if they win the referendum, highly unlikely, they'll still have a problem because they'll have half the population or more, who knows how many, mad at them for that. So it's, not, it's a no-win situation. She's better to wait, but whether she will, I don't know. So you believe that the province will be divided one way or another. If this passes, it won't pass by very much. If it passes, it'll be a slim pass. The province will be terribly divided for a time because people will be terribly upset. And every time they pay the HST, they'll be more upset. So I think she's going to have to wait. I'm sure there, I, in my mind, I don't think there'll be an election for at least a year or a year and a half or two. Isn't it interesting how these types of taxes seem to have brought down uh, premiers, brought down politicians, brought down uh, the popularity of the particular governments that are bringing them in? Even Dalton McGuinty, <clears throat> excuse me, who, uh, the Premier of Ontario, who actually uh, went about the right way of bringing in uh, their HST, uh, or a better way than than they did here in British Columbia, he still took uh, took a hit for bringing it in. With this push towards, uh, let's call them uh, consumption taxes, VAT taxes, value added taxes, uh, in in the, uh, across the country uh, in various provinces, um, what do you think might happen in a province, a have province like Alberta, for example? Do you think they've got a provincial sales tax? Do you think that, that, uh, that they could possibly see higher taxes? Well, first of all, no premier, no government has ever survived after introducing the HSD. No government. So that's already a, a message for McG McGinty and for Christy Clark. But uh, the push will be on. Uh, the federal government obviously wants the HSD, the VAT, for two reasons. One, it provides them more revenue because they now get 300 million plus in income taxes from BC they never used to have. Not a bad return on what they've got invested because that's forever. Of course. So they'll get the income tax where they, where they used to have to provide a tax deductible expense for the PSD. Now it's, a, now it's income. So they'll pay the income tax, they'll get the income tax. One thing. Secondly, I think it's part of uh, centralization and globalization because everything's moving towards globalization our prime minister recently mentioned that we need to have a bigger role globally i think this is all part and parcel of it and if they get bc they're very happy because they they jump across the provinces they jump across the prairie provinces and it's the prairie provinces that'll give them trouble because right now that's where the prosperity is that's where most of the jobs are being created that's where they have the lowest debt per capita that's where they have the balanced budgets all the HST provinces are in trouble so you think uh, that the HST plants or seeds if you will uh, 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 taxation power uh, solely in the hands of the federal government? I mean, we're answering to the feds, the province answers to the feds, they collect. Is that, is that what you're saying? The HST is a federal tax, and whenever we want to make changes or provide for exemptions, we have to go cap in hand to Ottawa. And of course, it'll be the Quebec and Ontario politicians, there's more of them, that decide whether we can have a change or not. Now, chances are they'll give us whatever the change requested. However, it's not guaranteed. It's still a federal tax. We're giving away a provincial jurisdiction to the federal government. Do you think that it's possible if the HST fails in this province uh, that the government will have to, uh, well, let me rephrase uh, the question I was going to ask you. Do you think very quickly that they'll have to cut a deal on the 1.6 million? I mean, you're a successful businessman, a very successful businessman. What would you do with that $1.6 billion that needs to go back? Well, first of all, they've only received 1 billion of 1 the 1.6 billion, right. billion right. so far. And secondly, the province has collected an additional $820 million because of the HSD over the last year. So we, let we, me interrupt you. So the, when the government talks about having to give back $1.6 billion, they really haven't collected the $1.6 billion. They've only collected $1 billion. They've only collected $1 billion. 
And because of the HST, they took in an additional $820 million in revenue. And of course, Ottawa got $300 million plus in income taxes out of the province that they didn't have before. So there's more than enough to pay them back. That's not a problem. And there is a matter of negotiating all of this, particularly the income tax they've already received. There's some negotiations, but there wouldn't be a problem. Very good. Let's take another break. We'll be back right after this. You're watching The Money and Wealth Show. Polycore Gold Corp has substantial assets. Magnesium deposit, inferred 52 billion pounds. Molybdenum deposit, indicated 1.9 million tons. Inferred 1.8 million tons of 0.087% MO. Past silver producer, average 182 ounces per ton. Trading symbol, MOR. Website, mollycore.com. Or phone me, Larry Ray, at 604-531-9639. Money and Wealth Show is archived online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Here's your host, Alex Sakumas. We're back, and we've been talking HST with former Premier Bill van der Zem, who is the main proponent uh, against the implementation uh, of the uh, full implementation of the HST uh, here in the province of British Columbia. I wanted to ask you about the uh, in a, an extension of the, the last segment we did about the federal government. The feds benefit uh, with the HST, the provinces benefit. Um, what businesses benefit from the HST and do people really benefit? And I'll leave that last part, I'll split that up for you and leave that last part because I'll give you some of my own examples that I've because I hear from people all over the province uh, on, a, on a daily, almost daily basis. But who really benefits? Talk to me more because they keep saying that businesses benefit, businesses benefit, and that, that removes the, the, uh, uh, the burden uh, on the individual. I don't necessarily buy that, do you? No, as a matter of fact, I have a bit of a theory. Well, it's more than a theory because I see it happening elsewhere in the world and it scares me a bit is that I think there's a move afoot to sort of provide little refund, rebate, bonus checks to the people at the very lower end. They get committed to government because they're waiting for those little checks every few months. So I think that's a tendency that I see happening. I also see a tendency for the middle class to be punished again and again. Look at all of the taxes and levies we have on practically anything and everything we do. There's a levy, there's a charge. I think the middle class is being punished and I think the middle class, the attempt might be to eventually eliminate the middle class and what we'll end up with is a world f with poor people and very rich people. And the in-between, I think eventually, I may not be about then, but it's going to happen one day. The middle class will disappear. The big beneficiaries in all of this is big, big business. We live in a time when everything's focused on the corporate sector, the big corporate sector. Steel, lumber. Well, more so the, ex the resource companies, uh, the manufacturing companies, which we don't have enough. They already, uh, under the PSD, had exemptions for anything they purchased to, ma to use in the manufacturing process. So there was already exemptions for them. The big right. beneficiaries, I think, are the big corporations, those that harvest our natural resources. It used to be they paid the PSD on some things. They exported their goods to China, to other places in Asia, the US or Europe, and in the price, of the exported goods was obviously what it is they paid in PST. So somebody in China, in the US, or elsewhere in Europe paid the tax. Now it's on the consumer. So we talked about the, the federal government being uh, a, a beneficiary of the HST and the provinces being a beneficiary and, and the people, it, the, the burden uh, shifting to the actual uh, people. Who are the, the, the folks who actually benefit really benefit from uh, the HST? What companies, what, what, what individuals would benefit uh, from the actual implementation? 
I think the, big, the biggest beneficiaries are the big corporations, those that harvest our resources. And um, it'll be pe people like General Electric when they build the run of the river projects to create power that they then sell to BC Hydro at a price higher than what BC Hydro can sell it for. But we give them their tax money back on whatever the investment as they install the run of the river project. Right. It's those sorts of companies that really benefit most, the big corporations, not the small businesses. And of course, the consumer pays the bill. It gets transferred to the to the individual so there's not uh, there's not the great big win that the the provincial government is trying to tell us that exists correct well with that i want to take this opportunity to thank you uh, for being here today and being our our special guest uh, i know that you're very busy and i know that you've got uh, a great deal on your plate so thanks very much for coming by and i extend the invitation for you to come by after uh the referendum and uh Let's see what happens. It'll be a fight to the finish, certainly. Thank you. Thanks again for coming. I'll be back in the last segment with a challenge to the current Premier, Christy Clark. American Manganese Inc. has a manganese deposit in Arizona, indicated 6.7 billion pounds, inferred 8.9 billion pounds, potentially the lowest cost producer of electrolytic manganese. American Manganese Inc. has a projected cash cost of 44 cents a pound. The metal trades near $2 a pound. Do the math. Trading symbol AMY. Visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 604-531-9639. The Money and Wealth Show is archived online at talkdigitalnetwork.com. Here's your host, Alex Sakumas. It was a real privilege to have Bill Vanderzam here to talk about the HST this week. To that end, remember that if you're voting to extinguish the HST, you're voting yes in the referendum. But having said that, I think it's also fair that we give the no side an opportunity to say their piece. So here's a challenge to Premier Christy Clark. Anytime she's ready, she's welcome here to come and talk about the laurels of the HST and the benefits that it'll bring to the province. Until next time, be well. The Money and Wealth Show has been brought to you by AmericanManganeseInc.com. 